Hey everybody, it's John Costigan. Never done a LinkedIn video, so I'm gonna keep it really quick. But this topic that I'm gonna talk about, I think it's a really big topic that's costing you money. It's, it's allowing you not to close business, and this is it. You are losing control of the sale. You are like the tail wagging the dog, and they're having you run around doing a lot of work without knowing what happens when you get done doing it. That's number one. But number two, you're losing control of a lot of the little tiny steps that are in those processes. Let me give you a very simple example. I'm talking to a sales rep in Houston. I was just in I was just in Seattle this past week, okay, and and just just got home late last night. Last week I saw this happen with another client, and it's almost like when you buy a new car, you see it everywhere. I'm starting to see this everywhere. Sales reps are losing control. The gentleman in Houston, what he was doing was he was calling into the CEO's office, and he was having a conversation. And there's a lot of things we've changed to our programs now because I know a lot of you know I've done all the live calls, right? I mean, I've done them in Dubai and Detroit and Dublin, Ireland. I mean, I've made live phone calls all over the world, right? And I showed my audience how to get in the door, okay? And we do it live. But what I will tell you is we've had to change this because what I did 10 years ago does not, what I did three years ago does not work today. It doesn't. So I know we've had to change up some things. One of the things that you need to change up is we'd like to send an email off to your president and CEO. And we work on that email, everything from the agenda, the objective, the clear next steps, uh, meeting times, all of it. It's so buttoned up. But it really puts you in a class of, hey, this isn't hi, I'm lost. This is no, we'd like to meet with you guys. Okay. So when you do that, it, it puts more meat on the bone. But example, this gentleman in Houston, he was making the phone call. Let's pretend the president is Michelle Smith and the assistant is Mary. Hi, Mary. Um, we'd like to see if we could set up some time to maybe schedule something with Michelle. Would you mind if I, I know it's probably a little early to just say grab her calendar. You probably want some information from us. So can I send something off to you? Sure. Everybody says yes to that. I mean, it's really rare they don't say. They're like, sure, send away, right? Confirm your email, send it off. But then he was hanging up. I'm like, well, that's where you're losing control because now you call back two days later and go, hey, Mary, how are we doing? Hey, Michelle reviewed it. Uh, there's no fit. And then you're done. And, and by the way, I'm a big believer that if you do that, you're now done. And if you now go to the HR department or to operations or somewhere else, you have an uphill battle, especially when you know that you just had the CEO's office going, no fit. We don't want to see you. So I've always said the reason why you're losing control is you're taking steps that are enabling you to lose control. And there's also steps you're not taking. Here's one step he wasn't taking. When you're on the phone with Mary and you send the email off, you go, hey, Mary, one last thing. I know with what our organization does, we focus on, and for example, I was representing a consulting firm. So I said, hey, we work with people. It's not about getting you more people. It's about getting more out of the people you have. So in this email, I'm going to lay that out to you. But hey, can you please send me over to HR? I know no matter what we do, HR is very heavily involved in these conversations because they're all about people. As well as operations, we look a lot at project management and your processes internally. So I want to make sure I actually reached out to them as well. Could you please forward me over there or give me their names and I'll follow up? Thanks. That's taking control. The part where you don't take control is where you go, hey, here's, here's what not control is. Hey, Mary, so um, would you happen to know anybody else who might have some challenges or issues with uh, project management or something like that? I used to do that. I don't do that now. Why? I pretty much know the role of who I need to speak to. So I'm just going, hey, listen, can you help me? Can you forward me over to this organization? Because I know I'm going to have to talk to them based on the letter I'm sending the president. You're in control of this call. Instead of throwing the control over to Mary, because a lot of times she might say, well, I'll tell you, well, let me take a look at your letter, John. I'll get back to you. And that's where you start to get these subtle little uh, resistance messages or the objections you get that could stop this, this train in its tracks. Okay? You know, I could tell you the one thing that really frustrates, I'm sure, all of us is when you run around doing a ton of work without knowing what happens when you get done doing it. Don't do that. That's losing control. Remember, they control the, the customer has the problem. You are the process. You know, can you imagine sitting in front of a doctor? I mean, I just, I ruptured an Achilles. I just got the cast off, right? And I'm only using this as an example because I just said this in Seattle this week. I said, can you imagine when I look at the doctor and he goes, yeah, you ruptured your Achilles. And, and the doctor goes, so John, uh, what do you want to do? I'm like, what do you mean what do I want to do? You're the doctor. You tell me. Well, how does this work? Okay, be the doctor. Do not forget to be the doctor. You're the doctor. Sure, the customer can decide if they want to have surgery or not, but you're the doctor. You control this process. 
So for example, the customer says, these are our five steps of how we decide to move forward with the vendor or not. You go, great. So these are your five steps. But the part where you're the doctor, you can go, wonderful. So those are your five steps. If I can do all these steps for you and meet your budget and align with my products in terms of what you're trying to accomplish with your problems, if I could do all that, hey, where do we go from here? How soon do you want to get this fixed? If they go, well, hey, I'm not really sure yet. Let me just see your proposal first. That is a huge red flag of, uh-oh, we're going to start running around doing a lot of work for free. So, hey, I know we're over five minutes on this, but I wanted to get this in front of you very quickly. And what I want to say is, listen, don't lose control of the process. You're the doctor. They're not. And if you can try to remember that, I tell you one thing, you're going to start focusing on real deals and you're not going to start filling out forecasts that truly almost look like the game show host here, you know, the game show here in the United States called Jeopardy, where one of the categories is I'll take creative writing for a thousand, Alex. That's no fun when your forecast, when you know in your heart and soul that forecast isn't a real forecast. Okay, so hey, good selling. It's my first video. I, I know it's probably way too darn long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye. Hey everybody, John Costigan here. The toughest part to any sale is getting in the door, right? Tell you what, click on the URL below this video or go to costigantraining.com slash free week. Take the first step of solving this huge problem of getting in the door. It's five days, five clips, less than five minutes. Click on the link. We'll see you in a few seconds.